up guys, it's me, Adrian Jensen from ProductionCreate.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this sweet portal effect from the Rick and Morty cards here. Check it out. Uh. See? There it is right there. Told you I could do it. Alright, let's hop in After Effects and get started. So the first thing we're going to need is a beam coming out of the gun. So I think what I'm going to do is break out some of those old Harry Potter effects. Let's do it. Let's go to the magic and powers section. And this is not going to be super creative of me, but I'm just going to use the green one. Shoot. And if you want me to go more in depth about how to use these effects, I've already done so in the Harry Potter tutorial. So maybe check that out. So just like in that tutorial, we're going to bring it in. We're going to scale it down, kind of roughly position it. And let's pre-compose that. And of course, we're going to use the puppet tool to kind of manipulate it. So I'll put one pin at the end, one pin here at the beginning. This pin at the end, we're just going to put on the wall. And we're not even going to animate that one. We're just going to leave it where it is. This one here at the beginning, we're going to kind of animate to follow the front of the gun here. There's some frames where the gun is moving quickly, so it's really blurry. You can't really see it. Honestly, I wouldn't even trip too much about that because all that means is that this beam is going to be blurry too. You're not really going to be able to tell if it's not attached exactly correct. So... Just enjoy your life, guys. Don't sweat the petty things. Don't pet the sweaty things, I always say. You've probably heard me say that. So there's our beam animated. We can turn on the motion blur. Yeah, you see what I mean. Also, we don't need the beam to really last this long, so I'm just going to put some keyframes on the opacity. Push T to bring that up. Hit a keyframe for the opacity. And just go forward a little bit and just fade it out. That's cool. And just to keep that clean, we can pre-compose it. Click beam. Move all the attributes to a new composition. And we did it, guys. Way to go. Congratulations. Change that layer to an add transfer mode. It would also be nice to have a muzzle flash going on at the same time, which is really not going to be a problem at all. We can just download one from the site as well. Let's head into the muzzle flash section. Just find one. There's a lot in here. There we go. That's an aggressive looking one. We can download that. Bring that in. Drop it into the comp. Kind of line it up to the right time. We'll need to reverse the scale of it. That's fine. Also scale it down as well. Maybe add a mask to kind of feather this edge off. We need to set the transfer mode to add. And we need to turn it green as well. So I like to do that with just a tritone. We'll map the white to like a very pale yellow green. Map the midtones to kind of a stronger green. Now for the portal itself, let's go back into the magic and powers section. And we'll pick this one here, Disc Perspective Ignition. This was never intended to be a portal. This is supposed to be a um, the disc attack from the Dragon Ball Z series, but we're gonna use it in kind of a different way. Let's download that. We might also wanna download the one that's on constantly, which is not the ignition version. Download that as well. And we'll go ahead and pop both of those into the project. Bring in the ignition one, and we're gonna change the timing of it. Right click it, hit time, hit time stretch, and maybe type in 33, which makes it three times as fast as it was before. And we will hide it for now so we can see what we're doing. Find the frame where the beam actually hits the wall, which is this frame here. And then we'll want this to actually start igniting on that frame. So that's perfect. Set it to add temporarily so we can see what we're doing. And just turn it on its side and place it on the wall. And if you duplicate it and then grab your other piece of footage that's not the ignition version, and if you hold down Alt and drag it over the duplicate, that'll replace it with the old version. We can go back to time and time stretch and just change that back to 100 because this one doesn't need to be sped up. Make sure that neither one of those are on add. And then we can move this top one forward in time and then kind of fade it in over the other one. So that way it will make it kind of slow it down and also it'll make it so that it lasts for the duration of our comp. There you go, now we can pre-compose those, change it back to add. And now we're gonna need to add a hue saturation effect to it, which will turn it green. We also need some of those white circles that you see in the cartoon coming out of the gun. So I'll show you kind of a hacky way that I can do that. So what we need to do is add a new solid. We can solo it for now and add this effect called radio waves. Bring that on. Here's what that does by default. We're gonna to need to turn up the frequency of these to get a lot more and turn up the expansion, which actually makes them go faster. But then we also wanna turn down the lifespan of these so that they kind of die before they reach the edge of the composition. And then we can also change the velocity of these, which will make them go to one side. So we can turn that up kind of like this, but turn the direction around the other side. So we'll hit minus 90 for that. Now you can see those are kind of going in this direction. And we'll need to animate the frequency to fade off over time. Oh, and change the color to white, of course, or like very, very pale green. And to make it look like they're more 3D circles in perspective, we're just gonna stretch it out this way like that. Now what we need to do is unsolo it and kind of line the end of this up with the portal. 
like this, and I'm gonna add a mesh warp to it. Okay, and so this point in the middle, I'm basically just gonna animate it so that it is always kind of pointing towards where the gun is, so it looks like these circles are coming from the gun. Like I said before, it's pretty hacky, but it works. And now when it comes time for the portal to close, it's pretty simple. All you do is you move forward to where you want it to close. Make sure the anchor point of that layer is on the center of the portal and just hit S for scale. Move forward a little bit, scale it down to zero. And then in the show, when these things close, you always see a little bit of glowing liquid pop out. So we can do that easily by going to the action and horror section. And we're gonna find a, a blood asset, which we're gonna use creatively. Here's an interesting one. And drag that into the composition. Position it in time and space. Now we just kind of need to add some color to it. So maybe we'll add a tint, kind of color it green. Maybe change the transfer mode of it to add, put a little glow on it. And as a matter of fact, we may just want to add an adjustment layer, put a glow effect on that as well. And just so we can see what we're doing, we'll turn the intensity of it way, way up so that when we turn up the threshold, we can see what we're really affecting. And we want it just to affect the things that would realistically be glowing in the scene. So in this case, our threshold is pretty much going to be all the way up. So now we'll turn the intensity back down to like two and bring the radius of it way out. Maybe turn the intensity up a little bit, just so that it adds a nice bit of glow to our shot. And here's our final effect. Here's what we end up with. Now I understand that this tutorial wasn't quite as comprehensive or in-depth as you might normally expect, but I'm hoping that the main takeaway is this. When you're looking at these stock elements, I want you to start trying to think of how you can use them more creatively. This was never intended to be a portal. This is just gross blood, it wasn't supposed to be used this way. This was obviously designed for a Harry Potter style effect, but there's no rule about it. This one, uh, yeah, this one's just a muzzle flash, that one's kind of on the nose, but it was our clever idea to turn it green. None of these assets are designed to be just one thing. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die, so just have fun and make some cool effects. If you like what we're doing on Production Crate, you should probably subscribe on YouTube so you can be alerted anytime a new video is uploaded. Another good way to stay informed of new content would be to like us on Facebook. Also, here's my personal Twitter account, which is the quickest way to reach me directly if you want to ask any questions or make any requests. I'm more than happy to do your work for you. And that'll be it for me today. Stay swifty and thank you for watching.